YouTube. Thank you for checking in to another video. In this video, we're going to do a DIY easy tutorial on how to hook up your car stereo in your house or workshop. This will be a full video showing how to hook everything up and just to show you all how easy this is. Let's get into it. Now, this is my workshop, guys, for anybody new here, where I do all my uh, filming with all my audio stuff. Normally, of course, for cars, but I obviously like to listen to music in here. And up to this point, I've had these old computer speakers in here that I've used just because I've been too busy to do anything else. But it is finally time to actually hook up a at least half decent stereo. So I'm going to show you how to do the whole process. Now, to do this, a couple things you're going to need. You're, of course, going to need a car stereo. I have old Pioneer unit here. This thing has Bluetooth, aux, and USB, so should work for all my purposes. You're gonna need some sort of AC to DC power converter. You're gonna need some sort of wire connectors or heat shrink. And then of course, you're gonna need some sort of speakers. And then I'm also gonna be hooking this up with a car audio battery. Now you don't need to use the battery, but I'll show you how to do it both ways and explain to you why I'm using a battery for this application. If you do have a battery, you'll also need some battery terminals and some little ring terminals as well. First thing you gotta get is a AC to DC power converter. Now your house runs off AC volts, whereas of course your car runs off 12 volt DC volts. So we have to be able to convert AC to DC and you get one of these guys right here. Now this is a pretty heavy duty one that allows me to do several things that you don't really need. So you can get a much smaller and simpler version of this, but this guy allows me to actually regulate the output voltage and amperage and stuff like that, which for a lot of my other videos and just other audio stuff that I do, this guy really comes in handy. I will of course leave a link to this in the description below, but you don't really need one quite this fancy. That being said, it was only like 60 bucks or something, so in my opinion, worth it. Of course, you'll need your radio, and I'm just going to really quickly demonstrate that uh, this works without having a battery or anything hooked up. So as you can see, uh, this powers on, and our power supply is powered on. And again, what I like about this guy is I can come over here, and I can adjust the amperage. I can adjust the volts which is just really, really handy for some other stuff. I do builds with batteries and stuff and they have to be charged at a certain voltage and amperage. And this guy really makes that easy. Now this is an old used stereo. So these wires uh, look like a mess, but real quickly, I'll kind of show you what we got going on over here. This black wire is your ground. So that'll of course go to the ground, either on your battery or on your power supply. We then have a yellow and red wire. Now, this yellow wire is your constant power wire. This is what draws the power that really powers the amp, and this is what saves your memory. So when you turn the unit off, so long as there's still power going to this guy, uh, your head unit will have power and will uh, save its setting like time and whatnot. And then this red wire is your switched on and off power. Now, if you want, you can connect these together and then just run it off the power on the power supply. And the way you turn it on and off is by turning the power supply on and off. And that will work, but the issue with that is that that will make you lose your memory on the head unit. And we don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave these disconnected. Basically, these both are gonna be going to my 12 volt source, which will be my battery. But on this wire, I'm gonna have a little switch over here. And this uh, switch will allow me to power the head unit on and off with leaving everything plugged up and leaving this yellow wire hot just so we don't lose any of that memory. Next up, you have this blue wire. This is an external amp turn on. So basically when this radio is on, 12 volts will come out of this guy. This is great if you have an external amp or something. I will have another video showing how to hook up an external amp so we can have a sub. You then, you may have a uh, orange wire or orange or white wire. That is just a dimming wire. If you have this in a car, when you turn on your headlights, it'll dim the unit so it's not so bright when it's really dark out. You then have gray, white, green, and purple wires. These are all your speaker wires. I'll show a diagram showing which ones go to which. But basically what you really need to know is that if they have a black line, they are negative, And if they're solid, they are positive. 
Now for this demonstration, we're just gonna use the gray and white wires. So I went ahead and taped up the uh, purple and green wires and I also taped off my remote wire. We're just gonna put those off to the side. I will use them later, but for now we're not gonna use them. For battery, I have this Kinetic HC 1200 Blue. This is of course a car audio AGM battery. Any battery will technically work for this application. I would recommend getting an AGM battery though if it's gonna be inside. Sometimes standard batteries can uh, leak or let off some fumes or something. So these AGMs are just a lot uh, safer. This battery has been sitting for a while, so we're gonna test it, uh, make sure it's all good. Hope y'all can see that. Sitting at 12.68 uh, volts, so this battery is good to go. switch right here so when I want to turn the radio on I can just walk right up and uh, power it up first thing we're gonna do we're gonna make our ground now this little switch does have a place for a ground on it just because it has a light in it so there's gonna be a light when it's on if you don't want to use the lights you could just hook up the uh, power and accessory wire but if we're gonna do this might as well make it look nice so we are gonna hook up the ground to this so basically we're gonna have one ground coming from the battery to the ground wire on the radio and another wire coming from the same either there or there running to the light for my ground i'm going to use brown wire because that's what i have first thing we're going to do we're going to get our ring terminal over here of course we want to make sure that this will fit in the battery terminal which it does we're going to get our wire just slide it up in there and then get some crimpers and just crimp that down you don't need anything fancy guys that has it in there pretty decent. Now we have this wire cut. Of course, these are gonna connect. And then we're gonna have our third wire connected to here as well, which goes to that switch. Now I'm using these cool little heat shrink slash uh, solder connectors. These things are awesome, but you could use crank connectors or just regular solder and heat shrink, however you wanna do it. So we're gonna twist that up a little bit. Slide this guy in there. Then gonna get both of these. Twist them a little bit. Twist that together. And twist those together. And then we're gonna slide this guy right over. I wanna get it just like that so the solder part is right over where the copper is. We're then gonna get a heat gun and just heat it up. That gives you a really nice waterproof, very solid connection. So this end, of course, goes to the battery. This is hooked up right here. And then the other end, I just put a little female connector on there. This will, of course, just snap into this guy right there. Next up, we've got a single yellow wire for our constant power wire or memory wire for this guy. So we're just gonna solder it to there and then put a ring terminal on this side and that'll plug into the positive on the battery. Next up, we got one piece of red wire. This one already had a, a, a female connector on it. This is gonna get hooked up to my switch. And then this other end is gonna get soldered to the head unit. Finally, we've got one more piece of wire. And on one end, we have the female connector. And on the other end, we have the ring terminal. Trying to get all this in, in the shot, We've got my AC-DC converter hooked up. Of course, uh, negative going to the battery, positive going to positive on the battery. We've got this, of course, brown wire, which is my ground. It's running to the radio, and it's also running to the ground on this switch. We've got this yellow wire coming off the battery that just goes to the yellow wire on the head unit. We've got this red wire running off the battery that runs to where it says power on here, and then where it says accessory on here, this wire comes off and goes to the red wire on the back of the head unit. Now what this allows me to do is when I pick up this switch, I can just go and the head unit powers on and we get a cool light in this switch too, which is really handy. All right, I've got my little switch mounted. So when I walk over here and flip it on, 
the unit starts up. One quick thing, if you do use these terminals, make sure you sand down right in there where the ring terminal sits on that piece. Next up, I added some speaker wire. So as I mentioned, we chose the white and gray. Now these would normally be the front speakers on your car, but of course for here, it doesn't really matter. The black line is always your negative. So I did the same over here. This wire had a white line on it. So I put the line to the line so we know which was positive and negative. And then I found this old speaker set that I had sitting around. So I got that hooked up. I've got the Bluetooth connected on this guy. Let's play something real quick just to make sure that it works. Bluetooth YouTube. For anyone who has stuck around this long, here's a quick sneak peek of what we're doing the Project Sequoia. Yes, that's right. We got, we're gonna have four of these six and a halfs and four of these super tweeters per front door. Going to be epic. I'll unbox these and reveal them here in a video soon. Now these speakers are ancient and don't really sound that good. So I'm gonna swap them out. I've got these Defmont's Sylvester speakers. These guys are incredible, sound super crisp and clear. And I've also got these CT Sounds Super Tweeters that I used to have in my Jeep. So, looks like everything should fit in the existing holes. So you're gonna pull all these out and put those in. These speakers sound so awesome, way better than the old speakers that were in that uh, box. Really, really crisp and clear, guys. The amp in this Pioneer head unit really pushes in pretty well. Now, the neat thing about this, I could hook up an external amp if I wanted to. I could hook up a bunch of external amps. I could have wires and speakers ran all throughout this building. I could run them outside. Literally could do whatever I want. And that's the nice thing about having a extra battery hooked up. It gives me a lot more power reserve so I could do stuff like that. As opposed to just running off the power supply completely. I think I will mount this up there somehow so it'll be out of the way. Then I'll hook up a sub amp and sub as well. That will be awesome, guys. Finally have some good bump in the shop here soon. Well, that is how you hook up a car stereo in a home or workshop application. Let me know what you think, guys. Really, really hope this was helpful to y'all. And let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. There will be another video showing how to hook up a sub amp and all that. Just like a car, but except we're doing it here. But I'll show all of that. That will be a great video, guys. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed 
making this. Stay tuned for more videos, guys. Stay tuned for more of the Sequoia build coming in soon and other sub reviews and normal stuff as well. Guys, thank you all so, so much. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day.